What's up, sunshine? It's Monday, March 17th. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Hope you get a little St. Patty's Day luck sprinkled onto your Monday. St. Patrick celebrated on this day each year because he is thought to have passed away around this time in the mid-fifth century. Did you know that this primary patron saint of Ireland was not Irish? He was born in Roman Britain, not Ireland, and was kidnapped and taken to Ireland as a slave at the age of 16. He herded sheep for many years before fleeing to a monastery in England, and that's where he became a devout follower of Christianity and was ordained a bishop. He then returned to Ireland as a missionary where he is said to have used the three-leaf shamrock plant to explain the three parts of the Holy Trinity while preaching. All right, now let's get to our lead story of the day. Powerful storms have swept across the Midwest and southern parts of the United States. We hope you all are safe. Thousands of people are facing vast destruction from damaging winds, pounding rain, and tornado outbreaks across several states. Dozens of people have lost their lives. It began on Friday in the Midwest with a line of severe storms moving east, affecting more than 900 miles of the region. Kansas and Texas saw dust storms from the damaging winds. Oklahoma's governor declared a state of emergency because of wind-fed wildfires. Then Saturday, we saw the most tornado warnings issued nationwide since April of last year, with at least 163 warnings issued. More than 40 reported tornadoes swept across eight states in the Midwest and South. The severe weather continued through Sunday with tornado warnings issued up the East Coast. Hundreds of thousands of people were left without power in the wake of the storms. Alabama, Mississippi, and Missouri were hit hard by tornadoes. In some areas, Power lines are down, trees are toppled, while debris from destroyed buildings and homes is blocking roads. All right, the ancient past and the futuristic now are colliding. People used a light beam 10 billion times brighter than the sun and artificial intelligence to unravel hundreds of ancient scrolls that were charred during the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD. In 2023, the Vesuvius Challenge began as a competition to decipher the 2,000-year-old Herculaneum scrolls using AI and other computer technology. Researchers and computer scientists from around the world have enhanced the ancient ink on the scrolls. They've now virtually unrolled the fifth scroll, and this could transform our understanding of ancient Greece and Rome. Our Nick Valencia has more. This charred scroll could contain valuable insights into ancient Greek and Roman philosophy, but the contents are challenging to get. Charred from the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD, the few hundred scrolls left unopened are in fragile condition. They're known as the Herculaneum Scrolls, named for the town that was buried in the eruption. Opening one could destroy its contents, so researchers have now turned to artificial intelligence to help discover what's inside. Using AI, scientists have performed the first virtual unrolling of one of the scrolls. The process uses a particle accelerator that speeds up electrons to emit light 10 billion times brighter than the sun. The light is then directed into laboratories as X-ray beams to scan inside the scrolls without damaging them. AI was trained to spot ink and put together images from the scan to make the text clearer for researchers to decipher. So we're, we've zoomed in essentially with an X-ray microscope is how you can think of this. And we're just looking at very, very detailed structures on the surface and identifying where there's ink. And anywhere we find ink, we sort of paint it on the virtually unwrapped surface. And at that point, text emerges on that image. And once there's something that resembles text, we partner with the scholars here in Naples and around the world who specialize in these texts and they're able to read it. The virtual unrolling of this scroll revealed substantial parts of the papyrus, including several columns of text. It is the newest breakthrough in the Vesuvius Challenge, a competition which encourages people to decipher text from these scrolls using computer vision and machine learning. The virtual unwrapping methods that the research team and the community have developed are really converging to the point where we think this year we're going to substantially read an entire scroll for the first time. So that will be historic for a single scroll. This scroll is expected to contain ancient philosophical writings that have not been seen for nearly 2,000 years. Researcher Michael McCosker thinks the text will be from the philosopher Philodemus, inspired by Epicurus. Getting new texts is, is great. Getting new texts from an author that I've worked on for a decade and a half now is even better news, uh, but I'll be happy whatever it is. 
10 second trivia, the main asteroid belt. Where most asteroids orbiting the sun can be found lies between which planets? Mercury and Venus, Earth and Mars, Mars and Jupiter, or Jupiter and Saturn? If you said Mars and Jupiter, you're so money. According to NASA, the belt is estimated to contain between 1.1 and 1.9 million asteroids, all larger than one kilometer or 0.6 miles in diameter. Furthermore, estimates show there are millions of smaller ones. To outer space now, where the European Space Agency's HERA mission has sent stunning new images of Mars back to Earth. The spacecraft, about the size of a small car, is swinging by Mars to use the planet's gravity for some extra momentum on its two-year-long journey to reach a double asteroid system by October of 2026. That's when it'll get an up-close look at the aftermath from the NASA DART mission, which intentionally crashed a spacecraft into an asteroid, altering its orbit two years ago. Our McKenna Ewan shows us how scientists plan to use Hera's data to possibly defend the planet from potential galactic shrapnel in the future. The European Space Agency's probe Hera just captured unique views of a rarely seen side of a Martian moon. The probe swung past Mars to gain extra momentum needed to reach its intended mission target, asteroid Didymos and its small moonlit Dimorphos. Hera launched in October 2024 to study the results from a NASA mission. That's when the agency intentionally slammed its DART spacecraft into a smaller moonlit to alter its orbit. The hope with both the DART and Hera missions is to test asteroid deflection technology on behalf of planetary defense. And this is what we're doing with air to go on into deep space and test an asteroid deflection technique to be able to model our, the, the, the defense system so that we can use it to any other object in the future. So we're going to gather scientific data very close by and improve our understanding of asteroids so that if needed, we can deflect them. Hira is expected to reach the Didymo system to begin investigating in October of 2026. Today's story getting a 10 out of 10, 866 brand new species discovered under the sea, including something particularly cool. Scientists were amped up when they discovered a guitar shark, along with the other new species uncovered by the Ocean Census, a project launched in 2023, aiming to expand our knowledge of the ocean's depths. An ambitious global effort to discover new marine life is paying off big time, shedding light on more than 800 newly documented species, including one guitar-shaped shark headlining the bill. A 10-year mission called the Ocean Census has been underway since 2023, and its first major update on 10 expeditions spanning the globe with divers, piloted submersibles, and remote vehicles announced 866 discovered species deemed brand new to science, including a deep-sea limpet, a venomous gastropod, and a teeny tiny pipe horse. But it's this newly found species of guitar shark that stole the show, so named for its well, shape of a guitar. Found off Mozambique and Tanzania, the discovery of this threatened species was music to explorers' ears. Rock on, and thanks for tuning in. It's shout out time now, and this one goes to the Bombers at Kenston High School in Chagrin Falls, Ohio. The Bombers are a little bit of history in action. The school's location near a major U.S. Army ammunition plant during World War II led them to choose the B-52 bombers that flew overhead during wartime to be their mascot. Rise up. That's all we have time for for today. Shine bright, everyone, and I will see you right back here tomorrow. I'm Coy Wire, and we are CNN 10.